Hey, welcome back to a shop. What you see here in front of me is my next project. Now as I made a small sign wise, or the sign base, and uh, the sign bars I made, I need an angle table for the milling machine or an adjustable angle plate as they are sometimes referred to. And I couldn't find a proper one, uh, an industrial surplus one or a used one that fits my need, so I bought a set of castings. In fact, this is sold as an import and it's an adjustable angle plate. It cost about 80 bucks, but um, I'm only going to use it as a raw casting. I'm going to remachine the whole thing. Um, I have chosen this one because when we open the nuts, and this moves a bit rough out of the box. Um, it goes from, it starts at zero, it goes on. <laughs> it goes up all the way to 90 and even slightly over 90 degrees and it goes back and it tilts even back uh, in the other direction about 15 degrees. So this has the full range that I need and it's not super high. It doesn't take up a lot of um, of, of table height or um, height between table and spindle and it's very simple made and it was dirt cheap I couldn't even buy the material to machine my own for 80 bucks so I'm taking this Chinese masterpiece which is really cheap for 80 bucks um, and I'm going to make it a proper tool and the horrible green paint will also go. Uh, let's take a closer look at this uh, piece of art. Okay, the angle adjustment is done via this pivot here and it's clamped with these two heavy-duty nuts. It's about a 16 millimeter thread. Yes, that's a 16 millimeter thread. And as you can see here, the paint is rubbed off and this is where the, <laughs> where the masterful paint job interferes with the, um, with parts of the dial and the, uh, the zero marker. And yeah, let's, clean the, the bottom surface and take it to the surface plate and have a look if how much material we have to remove or how precise this thing is from the beginning. And I'm only very lightly run a stone over it and remove any eventual burr. I'm not a big fan of stoning surfaces every time you use them, but from time to time you can do it. Let's go to the surface plate with this thing. And another reason why I have chosen it, it has 10mm T-slots and that's a size I have in the shop. Yeah, 10mm T-slots. But the sides of T-slots are... Hey very rough machined. Maybe we'll have to run an end mill through these slots to clean the sides up. Okay, let's take it apart. Shouldn't be too hard. Let's convince the pins out. There we go. Oh nice, they even have, a key, they keep this shoulder bolt, which is really rough, but nice touch. So 
doesn't turn when you tighten down the screw. Nice. Good idea. And the second bolt. Good. Hey, it even goes apart. I soaked this thing in WD-40 when I got it because it had the, uh, the cosmoline or whatever they use all over it. <laughs> it was a big mess. So I dropped it in a big bucket with a lot of WD and waited some time. Okay, then we have this uh, serial marker. Okay, that's removed. And let's remove the dial here too. It's riveted on with some aluminum rivets. Let's see if we can chisel them off. There we go. I won't use the, the style again. I will make my own. <clears throat> yeah. There we go. Okay, I set the base plate up on the shaper to machine in the outer areas up to this flange here. And I'm doing this so I have a reference surface when I flip it over on the milling machine and cut out the, the uh, clamping slots. And I need to make some space that my regular 8mm clamping studs with the big heavy duty washer fit nicely in there. They have space down here, there is enough clearance, but when I get over here the, the washer sits on top of this step here and I'm going to machine the step away. So this is one even surface and I also don't want the washer to sit on a painted surface. It's a bad practice because the, the paint has some give to it. Uh, not super relevant because the paint will chip away anyway as soon as I start to use this. Okay, right now I'm cutting down the surface, the clamping surface, um, which we will also reference off when we machine the back side or scrape the back side. And I also realized that the side wall of these ribs or splines here is not square to the surface I'm machining right now. So we have to change the shaper later to vertical feet and machine the, this face here on both sides. So I machined both sides, both of the areas of the casting, down to be flat and the same height to the um, to the table of the shaper. I measured down with a depth mic here and here, and this is within one hundredth of a millimeter over the whole distance. Now I'm going to change the feet of the shaper for vertical feet, and we're going to face these two locks, which, which are the bearings for uh, tilting. We're going to face this, this side wall, so they are square. For that we need to change the feet direction. Okay, the cock shapers have a quite unique feature. You can take the feet ratchet and mount take it off and mount it on the vertical feet for um, so the table gets moved by the machine uh, let's see I'll wait. this is always a bit fiddly 
Press the hole, you. There we go. That's it. Now the ratchet is mounted upside down on the on the vertical feet. We clamp the set screw of the ratchet wheel. And clamp this part here back on. This adjusts the the, the how, how much um, the travel of motion during each stroke for a feet. Okay, now we can feed vertically. Okay, I machined the two outer areas the side walls of the, of the bearing mount and the other <coughs> walls of the casting all in one setup. They are all in line now and we can tear down this setup. Okay, I get the part out of the shaper and next thing we're going to do is set it up on the milling machine upside down like this. Level it out and then we will clean up the slots. Okay, I did this off camera. I cleaned up the two most outer clamping slots with an amp mill. I just, as you can see, I took the part and I raised it off the machine's table with a few parallels, clamped it down in four places. Then I ran a 12 mm carbide amp mill through these slots and tried to clean them up as much as possible but as you can see in front here there's still some green paint left and back here there's a shimmer of green paint left um, i don't want to remove too much material as um, i still need to go in with a bolt and clamp this thing down and if I machined these slots completely clean they might end up with a width of 16 or 17 millimeter and then even my big washers my heavy duty washers would be too small but right now they are quite nice fitting and I can live with the fact that the slots are only yeah, drop it um, that the slots are only partially finished um, I'm, I'm not going to touch the inner slots. I'm only um, deburring the edges and lightly hit them on the inside with a file to knock off the big um, the casting flash. There is some, yeah, the casting is not the greatest in the world. So um, that's left to do. Now we can tear down the setup from the milling machine and. Uh, See how we go. Burrow with my surface plate and I'm wearing gloves. That means that we start with the scraping. Um, we'll check the underside for flatness and I suspect that, that the piece is high about in this area and this area. But we will see as soon as, as we give it a check with some high spot glue. This time I'm using the, um, the German branded um, uh, blue. It's a bit more faint in color, but in the beginning uh, I have to use a pretty thick anyway to get any reading on my surface. So I put a dab of it down on the plate. I use my roller and I spread it out. Just a nice small spot where it's somewhat even. And now I can blue up my surface, my work surface. With a somewhat 
even layer of it. Maybe a bit more for the beginning. I can, if you take the color too thick on your surface plate, you still can wipe it down with a clean paper rag, shop towel or something like that. Okay, now this is, this is prepared. And we can take our part, wipe it down so there are no small um, dust particles on it. I stoned the surface so we don't scratch the surface plate and we're good to go. And <laughs> not bad. Um, this area and this area is high. As the color transferred from the surface plate to the part, only the high spots catched uh, some of the color. And these are the high spots. And I can counter check this with a straight edge against a light source. I always like to do a idiot check with the straight edge to see if my uh, bluing of the surface is plausible. At least from time to time. I do it and don't do it always. So now we can go to the Weiss, take out the power scrape and hog off some material. Okay, clamped it in the Weiss, have my power scraper with a kind of a, uh, with a wide carbide blade in it and set it to about 12 13 millimeter of stroke. And now we can go to town. Okay, just as a first pass. And as you can see, we can remove quite a lot of material pretty fast that way. Stone it slightly. And clean it with some alcohol. Let me go back to the surface plate and check it again. Yeah. That's after the second check on the surface plate and as you can see the bearing pattern has spread out. Now we are touching here, 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 here. We start to catch some contact. Now that's quite good. Just... And give it another shot. That was the second go at it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the scraper and I'm just scrape over the whole surface once to even out and to, to give it all a scraped surface. Uh, otherwise it doesn't take the layout, the, the, the high spot blue very well.
Okay, now we, we hit the whole surface once with the scraper. We didn't want to change the uh, bearing pattern of the surface much, just give it some texture. Okay, now we can go back to the surface plate. Um, let's keep track of the passes. This was number three. Or in fact it was number two as we just uh, roughed up the surface a bit. Let's go do another check on the surface plate. And this is just a medium roughness uh, India stone. Okay, I changed the camera around so you can see this side a bit better. And I think you can see the bluing also a bit better. And this is path number six. Ah. And don't stone your surfaces too heavy, otherwise you will um, mush out your pattern when you do the when you do the high spot blue. Okay, this is after seven passes and apart from this one area here, we are pretty good. There is another slightly low spot over here, but I think that will even in when we go to do some finer scraping.
Okay, I just changed direction for this to get the remaining high spots. Okay, I did in total 13 passes on the surface and as you can see by the bluing it's even. It's really very even. It's a bit hard to show on camera because the bluing is a bit faint because I used a very thin layer of paint on the on the surface plate but as you can see it's pretty much bearing on the whole surface. I got only one low spot, one real low spot right here. But I think I can live with that. Apart from that I'm very happy. And when I wipe off the bluing, you can see that I got somewhat of an even scraping pattern. And it looks in my mind pretty good. I'm very happy okay. with it. I scraped the other edges or other surfaces of the base square and parallel to each other. I didn't film any of this. I will show it. I will show the process of scraping something square to each other in the in um, in the episode when we do the T slot table. Then I will show and film the process of squaring two edges to each other by scraping. So in the next episode we're going to bore open the pivot and we might start to work on the tilting top of it. So hope this is interesting so far. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.